go over the rules one more time. The game is eight ball. The match is a race to eight wins. We're playing all ball fouls resulting in cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. If the ball is not obvious, you must call the ball in pocket, and you must always call the eight ball. An eight on the break is a win, and any time you scratch on the eight, it is loss of game. Are there any questions? Shake hand, gentlemen, a leg for break. We know the players. We know the rules. We also know the stakes. And now we'll discover who gets the significant advantage from breaking off first. That's decided by the lag. The nearest ball to the bottom cushion gets the nod. Close or what? The players are ready. The world of waits. For the fans here in Reno, Nevada. And the millions of pool and sports fans watching across the globe. It's the biggest night in pool history. For the richest prize money ever. Let's get ready to break them. Pool house. Gladiatorial atmosphere. Let the action commence. The player stats are strikingly similar, with the American enjoying a marginal advantage in racks one percentage. The big difference, number of racks secured direct from the break. Morris has secured 20 more during the week than his rival. The most important stat though, who reaches eight racks first today? Here we go with the most lucrative match in pool history. Joining me in the commentary box for this one, Roxton Chapman. And while you have to say that Efren Reyes have just about won the lag, must be regarded as the favourite, Rodney Morris also has quite a pedigree. Absolutely. Good evening. What a final we've got in prospect tonight. I'm expecting like the lag. I'm hoping it's going to be a close match. It's only first to eight, as it has been throughout the tournament. But this time, no groups. Oh, get away. Get away, guys. Come on, Rockets. Go, baby. Oh, and not the best of stars so Efren would have been hoping for. Rodney Morris says that Efren Reyes is his, his favourite pool player. He has great respect for the Filipino, but he's not intimidated by him. And it was almost a decade ago to the week when Morris beat Reyes to win the 1996 one US ball, Open one, one ball, in Virginia. Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got that out of my system. He's happy about that. He's up and running. Get that ball out of my system. Thank you. He's certainly not lacking confidence. <laughs> a nice straight no, I wasn't kidding. one ball to get going. Oh, thank you, Lord. And he certainly does believe he can beat anybody in the game. And this is the man to beat, Efren Reyes. Shoot the seven. So I have to shoot this five ball here. So I have to shoot the five. I have to shoot that. I have to shoot the four now. Four on the side. Four on the side. Likes to chat to himself, likes to G himself up. Things aren't going his way, he'll try and uh, turn that around with a bit of banter. Yes, a very expressive, outgoing individual. Rodney Morris uh, emphatically through to the final tonight, winning his first four out of four matches yesterday to be the first player through to the final. Efren Reyes yeah, had to wait a bit longer. Only winning three out of five and going through on a percentage of racks won and lost. 
Yes, it was a close squeeze in the end. It really was. There is uh, Chaddings to himself again. He knows he's finished a bit straighter than he would have wanted. Half an inch, again. Half an inch, maybe. That's certainly a little bit straight for him. He's got the orange five, five into the top right. Ooh, come on, baby. Good shot, though. Use the, uh, the width of the pocket. Six in a corner. Six ball. Yes, that's one of the misconceptions about mm. pool in comparison with snooker. People say the pockets are quite generous. Obviously, that is the case. But the key to pool is using all of the pocket for position. And that's what the top players do. Two on the side. I mean, corner. Oh, corner. Yes, it really was a much better shot than probably it looked, using all the width of the pocket. And now a simple finish for him in the first rack. Eight ball, side pocket. Yeah. The adrenaline is flowing. The shriek of joy. America won, the Philippines nil. And that was Roxton, very emphatic. He's certainly happy with himself, isn't he? Port history, because previously that was the £270,000 won by Mark Williams for winning what was then the Embassy World Championship at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. Embassy World Snooker Championship. On the current exchange rate, Morris seven racks away from picking up £277,000. Yes, early days though. I wonder if he'll get that uh, presented in a, uh, a briefcase as well, Phil. We saw Torsten Homer win the first event, the North American 8-Ball Open Championship. And Kevin Trudeau, the founder, walked out with a briefcase. And to everyone's surprise, full of cash. Then if these guys weren't under enough pressure already, I've noticed some luminaries of the pool world in the audience, watching their every move, critiquing them. The likes of Mika Imminent, Charlie Williams, Nick Varner's there, and Britain's Raj Hundal. One ball, four. I'm sure lots of these players staying back to see if they can learn a thing or two. Raj Dal incidentally went out in round three, got through the first two rounds no problem, and went out in fourth place out of the five-man group. Uh, incidentally, Robert, Robert McKenna, also from the UK, played in that group and also went out at that stage, finishing fifth. Steve Davis is considered something of a wonder by playing top level snooker still at the age of 49. Reyes, 52, and still as good as ever. And it's not just playing this game that takes its toll, it's also jetting all over the globe. A very international tour, this. He's won in Asia already this year. He came here direct from winning the World Cup of Pool. Playing alongside Francisco Bustamante, he gave the Philippines the trophy. That event was in Newport in Wales. And who should they beat in the final? America. 13-5. The Americans represented by Earl Strickland. And Reyes' opponent here today.
Rodney Morris. Yeah, tricky little shot. Reyes made it look fairly straightforward. Just punching the cue ball out. To leave himself the three down the rail. That looks about perfect. Just a nice little angle, just a bit of topspin on the cue ball. That's all he needs to leave himself what should be a straight eight ball. Just making sure that stripe, brown stripe, won't get in his way. If, it, if he thinks it will, he might play a gentle stun shot, but looks like looks pretty straightforward from here. Taking his time though. Wants to make sure he clears from here and gets back on level terms with the break, of course. Collision with the stripe was intentional. Yeah. A sign of things to come, maybe. A very high standard from both players. Morris out of the gate quickest. Reyes responds. One rack each. Remember, first to eight for five hundred thousand dollars. And Sierra Resort here in Reno, Nevada. It's the final of the International Pool Tours World 8 Ball Open Championship. And two of the wa finest wielders of a pool stick in the game. Rodney Morris, fast flowing left hander, <coughs> up against Efren Reyes. Recognized, I think almost universally now, as the man to beat. Not just in 8 ball, but also in the 9 ball discipline as well. Well, a pretty uh, poor break by anybody's standards. Efren, he just didn't get anything into it. Uh, didn't get his body movement going. Didn't control the cue ball very well. I wonder if this is a pattern, you know, coming up dry on the break. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Maybe you don't mind it happening in your first few matches of the tournament. When you get to the final, you want to see them going in off the break. But Reyes is, I said this um, earlier on in the tournament, he's not that well known for his good breaking capabilities, really. And that's the same at nine ball. However, it didn't stop him from winning the nine ball world championships. And it also hasn't stopped him from getting to the final tonight. Rodney Morris, I think, has much has got much better uh, break and run out statistics throughout this event. However, what does it really mean when it gets to the final? took up the game seriously did Rodney Morris at the age of 17. Soon he left Hawaii with the aim of becoming top dog. Seven to the side. Won that 96 US Open but then took a four year hiatus from the game but returned to win the Reno Open just down the road in fact at the Sands Regency Hotel, Hotel and Casino in 2001. He's lifted that trophy twice. He's also been the <coughs> World Pool League champion in Poland in 2003. The UPA Players' Champion, a variety of other titles. But I think the thing he's most proud of, at the 2004 Moscone Cup, the annual battle between America and Europe, he played five matches, he won all five, 
and not surprisingly, he received the most valuable player award as America prevailed. Three in the corner. No problems knocking the three into the centre pocket. Although he'll have to play a couple of good positional shots to get on the six. And it, that was probably the error. He plays to get on the one, then the six only goes into the bottom right hand pocket. So it wasn't the easiest of finishes for Rodney Morris. Could have played it easily into the centre, I thought he was going to, but he used the angle to get the cue ball back to the left hand part of the table. Still a surprising miss. Yes, it wasn't all that complex a shot. Not for someone of his capabilities. As you can see, the cue will finish just about perfect as well. He would have knocked the one down, down the rail and had the six. So really, he should have been. He should be uh, breaking it two-one up now. But instead, he's left Reyes with no problems with the stripes. Nice first shots, making sure he got the cue ball back out centrally on the table. A nice punch, stun shot. Going back on that theme of players in the audience, just spied some more. Sweden's Marcus Schumat sitting over the top of where Efren Reyes is sitting when he's not at the table. You've got Francisco Bustamenti and another former World Nine Ball champion, Alex Pagulayan. Expert eyes trained on this most intense of matches. underwent eye surgery last year that proved a roaring success and what a record he's put together already in this IPT when the King of the Hill event in Orlando last December beating Mike Sigal in the final, $200,000 the prize there, and he was fourth in the North American Open in Las Vegas in July, banking another $65,000. Sir Roxton, by my reckoning, if he can reach eight today, that will be $765,000 in three events. Pretty good going. It's pretty amazing, isn't it, to think about it? The money's just super rich now, these tournaments. Of course, there's more to come after this. Reyes has to get the bridge out for this. Shouldn't be any problems for him. Just needs to draw back maybe a foot or two. Leave himself near the second diamond. And that's uh, maybe a bit further than he wanted, but still a fairly straightforward eight in the side. Yes, a little betwixt and between. It should go, but it's not quite the gimme he would have anticipated. Rodney Morris won the first rack. Reyes, though, has claimed the next two. Sooner or later, we're going to see a ball made off the break. Maybe it's going to be in rack four. 
and Reyes will extend his lead. And this was the mistake that proved so costly for the left-hander. I knew I, I knew I was gonna have a shot like when I'm when about the balls, you know what I mean? I knew I was gonna have a shot. Do you have a decent amount of this amount of this? Yeah, I'm not I'm not Yeah, oh yeah. The story of Efren Ray's <coughs> well it's a fairy tale story really came from a humble background. He started working at a pool hall owned by his uncle when he was five years of age. Immediately fell in love with the game, he was beguiled by it. And in fact the story is that he used to sleep on pool tables in that particular property. So that when he woke up he could immediately start playing the game. Well, I'm sure it's not too different where they are at the moment, Phil. They've been playing non-stop, at least five matches per day, each player. As we see, another dry break. Real frustration for the players when this happens continuously. You were mentioning the schedule. Many people thought that it would act against Efren Reyes, i.e. age, advancing years equals lack of stamina, but throughout his career he's always enjoyed proving people incorrect. Uh, at the moment it's not proving any different about his break off. Uh, we heard him talking to Alison Fisher yesterday in one of the, his pre-match interviews and uh, when Alison mentioned Making a ball off the break, he laughed and said yes. If only I could make a ball off the break. Had another laugh, so he knows. Five in the corner. Five it's a slight weakness in his game, but he also knows that's it. And as I said, even Five with his corner. statistics not being that great at breaking off, it still hasn't stopped him from getting to the final. the shout to win the biggest prize in pool or Q sports history. By the way, just for the record, if you're wondering which player ran the most racks from the break in the tournament, it was Oliver Ortmann, the German. He finished fourth and went back to Germany with $80,000. Overall, he ran 93 racks from the break. Six on the side. Only four more than this man. And of course, Morris has the opportunity to catch and even surpass that number. Yes, and he's looking good here, isn't he? Just a delicate shot. Trying to nudge the eight house into a potable position. I think he's just done it. Two in the corner. Yes, the eight looks like, as long as the cue ball slows down. Has it gone far enough? I think he's all right. That was close to hooking himself, i.e. Snookering, snookering himself, but Rodney Morris just about gets away with it. And he just about draws level. Two racks each. When will we see a ball made from the break? <laughs> I like that statement. You're right. There's definitely a pattern that the viewers were convinced that this match would go close. Well, those who predicted going down to the wire might be right. Certainly, early indications suggest neither player dominant. Two racks each. First to eight gets the knot. Following the break, Mr. Reyes has ball in hand. Well, we were wondering when we were going to see a ball potted off the break. We saw one there. Unfortunately, it was the cue ball. Yeah, a poor mistake. Again, something a pool player never wants to do, even in practice, scratch in the middle pocket. It just That's poor control. It means you've hit the, the first ball, the one ball, almost, well, almost half ball instead of full in the face, which is what every player is trying to do. Even in practice, I know the players are furious with themselves when they do that. So I don't know how Rodney Morris must be feeling now. And he's given the advantage straight back to Reyes. Who looks to have a nice open table to have a go at. He's also got the added advantage of being able to put the cue ball where he wishes.
all kinds of choices. Yeah, having a look at uh, sorting out the, the group of balls near the eight. So you can see there's a couple of stripes and a solid. If you were to get rid of one of those now, would open up everything else for the rest of the clearance. So what he decided to do was nudge the solid four away from the eight, leave that in open play. Now all he has to worry about is his other six stripes and is picking his chalk up as well. Fifteen in the corner. <coughs> Something like a fifteen or sixteen hour time difference between Reno and Manila. Fourteen, corner. But that doesn't mean to say the pool mad Filipinos will not be keeping tabs on this match. Keeping tabs doesn't really do it justice. They are total devotees of this game. And Efren Reyes is one of the country's leading sporting heroes. Lots of running side. Just about got away with not Chineseing himself. He's okay though, he can roll the nine in. Just run down the table to where he's looking at now. All he needs is to be fairly straight on the 12 ball into the centre. Nine ball, corner. So I just see him run through about a foot or so. Maybe a bit closer to the cushion than he would have wished. Well, side. All he has to do is make sure the 7 doesn't get in the way of him and the 13. Again, just a gentle roll shot. Misses the 7. Goes a little bit close. However, that's pretty good. He's got a nice angle. Maybe too much angle. Certainly a straightforward shot would be to pot it slow and hold the cue ball that side of the table. As you can see the black, the eight ball doesn't pass into the bottom right. So if he's got too much angle, he might have to think about coming across the table twice. And that is an unwanted complication. Thirteen in the corner. But Roxton, that's what he's done. The only problem, he's glued the cue ball to that side cushion. This is nervy. Eight in the corner. A shot that no cueist likes. He snatched at his upper body movement. The tension got the better of the maestro. Three ball, corner. Well, what a big shot to miss. And he's virtually guaranteed to have given the rack away as well. Certainly just overran it, just by a few inches, and that made all the difference. He had to come across the table twice, and as Phil said, left himself tight on the rail, and nobody likes to play those. Side. And I suppose at 52 you're prone to 
raw nerve ends more than his much younger opponent. Morris, by the way, will celebrate his 36th birthday in November. Yes, I thought uh, for those watching yesterday, we saw Oliver Waterman take on Ephraim Reyes, and I thought, I said at the time, that Ephraim wasn't quite playing his perfect positional play that we, we expect of him. And he's probably just wondering to himself, just how did that happen? How did he end up just slightly wrong on the eight to make it missable? Six ball, corner. And uh, I feel he'll just have to improve on his positional play just that little bit if he wants to walk away with that uh, half a million dollars. Because Rodney Morris is also looking very good and he's gone about his business very quickly here. Eight in the corner. Wow. That one almost stayed okay. above ground. What a rack that was. You know, you've got to think a potential turning point there. It should have been Efren Reyes who leads by three racks to two. In fact, it's Rodney Morris, all of because of that missed eight ball from under the side cushion. Will Reyes rue that? Will Morris forge on? The answers after the break. Fun. Day tournament. That's the <laughs> World <laughs> Eight Ball <laughs> Open <laughs> Championship in <laughs> Reno, Nevada. It's a ball. Get ready 200 get the players ball. started out from all over the world. Now it's down to a battle between a flamboyant American and a vastly experienced Filipino. Ten ball. E. The super draw. Eureka! Finally, we see a ball super made draw, from the break, effect. and the first to break through, Morris. And can you believe it's taken six racks to do it? Quite ball, astonishing. Ball. Well, Morris straight into his no messing about pool game. Four ball, corner. Really not taking any time at all. Well, Roxton, he's a naturally swift player, always has been. So why compromise his natural style? I think he's doing the right thing to just treat this as a normal game. We all know it isn't. But if he knocks himself out of his own rhythm, self-defeating. Absolutely, Phil. He's got to play his own game. That's the only way he's going to win. And uh, really with a very good opportunity to take a two-rack lead. No real problems. He's got the five and the two sitting ov over both middle pockets. <coughs> He's got a nice opportunity now to take the two and get rid of the seven, which is his only ball that's uh, slightly out of position. But as I say, he's got the chance now to just stun the two in, leave an ang angle on the seven, which he's done nicely. Should be straightforward from here, really. He's just got to make sure he ha has a shot on the five. Seven ball, corner. Five ball, side pocket. Eight ball, side. It's looking like a very well needed break and run for Morris. Yes, the most rapid rack we've seen so far. Rodney Morris trailed 2 1. Now, though, he leads 4 2. Morris wins game 6. Hawaii. Oh. On a roll, maybe. Yeah, well, could that Miss Black huh? still be the turning point? It certainly has for this part of the match. Now the key, consolidation. Make a break. Direct from the opening shot in the next rack and put Efren Reyes under even more pressure than he already finds himself. Yes, Rodney Morris has got good stats on the breaking and running in this tournament. 
over 45% of the time he's had the break. He's managed to convert that into a rack winning run. And that's compared to Reyes, who throughout the event before this final was uh, just under 35%. So quite a difference between the two players' breaks. Oh! I thought I had it, guys. No. But it's not proven that way in this final. Both players struggling off the break, just had the one break and one and run. Well, one out of seven, that's virtually unheard of. Yeah, so in the slow cloth, we've talked about it all week, really does make a difference when it comes to the break off. The balls don't gather the momentum as they do on a nine ball break off with a faster cloth. And you just wonder as well, Phil, with the players, the quality of these players who seem to be pretty much being able to run out anyway when they, do, when they are at the table. Is it not worth just letting them break off and, uh, and maybe making the break alternate breaks instead of winner breaks and just making it so that they are going to get one off the break? Because there's nothing worse as a player, to, and, and you can't get on a roll if you can't carry on that and uh, get on the table and get winning off the break and get going. It's hard to get the fluency going. And certain re tables undoubtedly react differently from others. Look at the match we saw in the final group between Dennis Okulio and Mika Eminen. Okulio prevailed by eight racks to nil, running seven from the break. Chalk and cheese to this. Yeah, and that also probably put pay to Eminen's chances, even though he won three out of his next four matches. 14 in the corner. from Reyes sneaked ahead on percentage of uh, racks won and lost. <coughs> Mika Rimland was just nudged out into third place. Oliver Ortman came fourth. Oh, no. Dennis Orcolo we just mentioned he came fifth. And uh, Corey Jewell came six out of the six man group yesterday. Yes, and just to dot the I's and top, cross the T's, I can tell you the best British place finisher was Carl Boys from Yorkshire. Eighth overall to win just under $41,000. And Mick Hill from the West Midlands. He finished ninth. Well done to both of those two. Fifteen Short of pace, annoyed. The nine ball will cut up to the bottom nine the right hand pocket. Yes, yeah, certainly not as easy as he would have wanted it. Just the nine left, as you can see on the graphic. didn't have the angle to hold it, so he went across the table. And that's a pretty good shot, leaving himself virtually straight on the eight. Eight in the side. Yeah! Reyes back in the reckoning. Morris didn't make a ball off the break. It's now 4-3. The International Pool Tours showcase final of the World Eight Ball Open Championship. Rodney Morris, the underdog going into the match, currently leads by four racks to three, and that means he's halfway towards pocketing the $500,000 first prize.
flashing lights, all kinds of gizmos, full house, big arena. But all Efren Ray is concerned is making a ball off the break. Yeah, and a change of tactic. It's gone for a very soft, soft break off and really not coming anywhere near making a ball. Well, the other approach wasn't working, so I think changing tack made some form of sense, although it didn't work out. Yes, but it's certainly not the thing you want to be doing, Phil, changing your gameplay during during a match, especially during a final. OK, we know it's frustrating not to make a ball off the break. However, if, that, if things start getting to you and you start thinking about, well, maybe I need to uh, change my shot selection, maybe do this a bit differently, try this out, then you're not really thinking on the, the game at hand. Corner. Electing stripes. So Reyes, even though he may have thought it was a good idea to try a different break, could cause very costly and uh, might be well advised to just keep that for the practice room next time. Saying that, not the best positional shot for Morris. He's okay. He can keep going with another stripe pot. But positional wise, it's not the easiest of clearances, it doesn't look. The 11 ball is the ball that's probably going to cause him the most trouble. As you can see, it's the, the red stripe 11, which is down near Morris's side of the table. And there's a couple of stripes, a couple of solids rather, that are uh, getting in the way of getting a nice position onto it. 12, minutes, 12 ball side pocket. If that 11 wasn't there, he wouldn't have any problems really. He's just got the 12 in the side. And his last two stripes near the 8. However, that 11 is there. That's why we're seeing him take his time. A bit more thinking to do about this than normal. Has this gone wrong? No, he's OK. He's missed the four. It's a good shot. Elected to try and get on that awkward 11 straight away. Played it very nicely. Now he should have no problems, really. Just uh, maybe a bit of draw on the cue ball. Bring the cue ball back before those solids. Well, again, just jumped on the shot. The technique, not good enough. Well, it wasn't there for that, was it? You can see from the other angle, his body was well up after the shot. There it is. Reyes was guilty of exactly the same thing on the decisive eight ball. A couple of racks ago. Symptomatic of the pressure they're under. And that pressure, in turn, is created by the huge financial stakes and the prestige they're both well aware they said so in their pre-match comments that this is the biggest match they've ever been involved in and they've been involved in thousands Well, he didn't get one off the break, but he's got a chance to make up for that. I'm pretty sure he's under hit that. Yeah, he's looking a bit uh, mystified. 
wanted the simple seven in the, in the center, might still be able to cut it in. Then you know, Roxton, that's what happens when tightness gets into the cue arm. More likely to dig into the cue ball, maybe stun it when you want to let it flow around the table. And that leads to position coming up short. Seven in the side. Plenty of side on the cue ball, nicely done. He was okay in the end, but he's got, got to be careful Bye, ball. with this clearance. He's got the one and the six close to one another in the center of the table. Trying to get onto those now. And again, well under hit. Looks to the heavens. Under normal circumstances, he just get down and pot this without really bothering. But when the degree of difficulty is cranked up just a little, those pockets mentally shrink. Six ball, corner pocket. Side pocket. Six on the side. Combination. Well, he's called the six into the side. He must have spotted a combination from the one first. Indeed he has. Has he left the one on? Oh, I think he has. That could have gone wrong. He didn't fancy the long pot. One ball side. One Maybe ball the long pot pocket. would have been a better positionally. However, he's been okay. Not a, not a bad break for Efren. And that was a better pot than it looked because the near jaw of the middle pockets on these tables juts out. Yes, he'll be very relieved. He's just about got away with his clearance by the looks of it. Eight in the side. The Morris blunder, and Efren Reyes capitalizes. He's stubborn. He will not be shaken off. The Filipinos in the crowd getting excited. And with every justification. Seven. Pocketed $350,000. And that was good stuff. Yes, for the uninitiated, Hill Hill means 7-7. Seven, seven. It would be appropriate if it went Hill Hill because Reno, of course, in the shadow of the Sierra Nevada mountains, there are a little more than hills. Well, he's all at sea with his break off. He really is all at sea with the break. Certainly wouldn't have intended the reaction he got off the cue ball. See, it came straight back down the table and uh, even finished pretty much on the bottom rail. And also, not a very good split. Rodney Morris will be doing well clear from this position. Quite a number of the solids and stripes not making it to the halfway point of the table. Roxton, it was always going to be very difficult to predict the outcome of this one and how it would progress. But no one could have foreseen the lack of success that both players are having with the break. It's extraordinary. It is quite astonishing, yes. I mean, even as I say, the players are having problems with their breaks, but you still wouldn't expect. Down the side. 
the lack of results we've had. But in a way it's a fitting that a player, okay we have got a winner breaks in these rules so it is nice that maybe we're not seeing somebody walk away with a match fill. It's kept tight. One of the reasons, yes, because they're not making a ball off the break. As we mentioned earlier in the tournament, but if you're watching this event for the first time, I'll just repeat it. It is theoretically possible for a player to win the lag and run all eight racks from his break and consequently for his opponent not to have a single shot. It's unlikely, but in the corner. it is possible. Come on, baby. Woo. One thing we haven't mentioned, we've talked about the $500,000 first prize. The runner-up is consoled with a check for $150,000. So a $350,000 differential. Yes, and a stroke of fortune for Ronnie Morris. Nearly, very nearly lost position on the one ball. He cannoned into the six. In doing so, he's left the six available for the centre. And a, well, he's under hit that a little bit. Wanted the eight straight into the corner. In in the corner. Now he's in got to cut corner. it back. Certainly not how we would have wanted it. See, saw stuff. Morris letting out his frustrations, relieved to be back in the ascendancy. He won the first rack, he then moved 4-2 ahead, and now he's back in front for the third time in the contest at 5-4. Might have noticed there uh, the referee, Ken Schumann, just cleaning off the cushion rails. There might be a little bit of perspiration there. Well, I can't believe he's done it again. That's twice in his final, he's scratched into the centre. And that really is another, well, it's just a, a basic error really. Okay, it's hard to control, but these players at this level, the last thing they want to be doing is scratching the cue ball. <laughs> We're just not going to see an end to the drama off these breaks, are we, Phil? Well, they say that truth is stranger than fiction. When you're going off the break, it's not just surrendering control. Nine times out of ten, you place your opponent in a position of overwhelming superiority in the rack. Yes, and normally with the amount of balls on the table, all 15 all there, there's going to be one or two that are normally blocking one another. And Rez with a chance to immediately sort that out. in the corner. He felt that was the problem ball, so he's knocked it down. Ball, corner. <coughs> Bye. Bye, ball, corner. 
game for the slightly more difficult but still straightforward enough really for Efren taking the five down the rail and wants the cue ball to slow down indeed it has a very nice shot I thought maybe he was going to roll it in he tried a soft screw controlled it perfectly two on the side one on the side Yes, and Ephraim well known for using the angles. Didn't decide to just to play a stun and then maybe a screw shot. He's wisely left a nice angle on the three so he can use the cushions, use some side, leave himself in the centre of the table, which most players are often trying to get in that position because they know they have another pot on and normally with a nice angle. In this case, the seven to leave an angle for the eight. It would appear the that the pendulum is about to swing again. Twice Rodney Morris has scratched on the break. Twice he's been fully punished. Once again, they're on level terms. 5-5. Five, five. Morris and Efren Reyes in the final of the World 8-Ball Pool Championship. Steely-eyed. He's been in many high stakes games in the past. Back in 2002, when he won the Tokyo Nine Ball Championship, he received what was then a record pool payout of $200,000. He's also won the winner take all Challenge of Champions at the Mohegan Sun Casino in 2002. In 03, Efren Reyes was inducted into the Billiards Congress of America Hall of Fame. Been there, done that, and potted the eight ball. But can he get over the line here today? Same old story, Roxton. Yeah, the way he's breaking at the moment, I, I can't see him making a ball. He's just not giving much commitment to it. It's getting that close to the finishing line as well. These players are becoming more and more desperate to make one off that break shot. That's solid. That's nothing else. And again, not the nicest of splits for Rodney Morris to come to the table for. He's got an easy stripe to go out, to get started, so looks like he'll probably take the solids. What he's looking at there, he's got his five, well if he does take solids that is, there's a solid five, but next to that there's a stripe. <laughs> and he knows at some point he's going to have to break into those two, whether he takes stripes or solids. Well, solid as it is then. Four ball, corner. One thing in Rodney Morris's favour in this clearance is he's got his solid three, which goes into the centre, the left centre, and that's very close to his blocked five ball. So he might have an opportunity then to leave an angle on the three to break it out. 
He's not happy though, he hasn't left a nice shot. He might be able to have a go for the three now and break the five out. Wow. That is great. The other thing, of course, he's so close to the six. If he could pot the three, if maybe he needed to impart some spin, he may not be able to do that to get into the five. So that may not be on. Two in a corner. Two ball. Yeah, and he's One decided ball. not to play it because he knows he won't be able to get the five out of this visit and he needs to leave the three there to enable him to do it at a later visit. So taking on the harder two ball. Pretty good shot. He's still, the he's still going. Yes, but it's getting more and more problematic. Again, tight on the rail. He can't do anything spin-wise with the cue ball. When he embarked on this intended clearance right at the start of the rack, he knew in the back of his mind it was not going to be smooth. It's one of those where something special is required. One or maybe two golden shots to open things up. Yeah, and he's just had a quick look at the six into the top the corner. Point. And that doesn't look a bad shot because he should have the angle maybe to get into the five now. Oh. Well, it was a shot to go for. He broke the five out, but he didn't make the six. And it was missing a ball into that pocket, albeit a little more simple than that, which cost Morris the previous rack. Yes, and I'm just wondering if <laughs> FMA wouldn't have known at the time, but his poor break off may win him the rack. Left it awkward for Morris. Had to do a lot of thinking. He never quite got his position right throughout the clearance. In his own mind, Roxton, he'll be thinking, he should win it from here. Well, indeed, he should win it from here, Phil. We know what's at stake. However, no real problems to be seen. The only possible awkward ball be the 15 next to the 8. But he's immediately decided to get rid of the stripe that was blocking that. Good to see that he's still thinking straight. That is his only problem ball, purely because it only goes into the bottom right pocket. If it was available to the bottom left, we would see him take no time at all getting down and clear these up, I'm sure. Hand on the side. Fourteen in the corner. Like he's going to leave the 15 for his last ball. Nine ball Get rid of the nine down the rail. Just needs to leave himself a nice angle from here to get onto his final stripe. That looks pretty good. As you can see, just a slight angle, that's all he needs. Ball on the side.
Rodney Morris has led this match on three separate occasions. Efren Reyes, it would appear, about to do the same. Wanted to be a touch straighter on this, hence the sigh. Well, a very clever shot. Slightly surprised he did leave the 15 to last because just for that reason he could have got the right angle. But it was okay to cannon into the eight, leave himself the simplest of eights. He's indomitable. Back in front at 6 5. Has been one of those matches where, well, neither player can get on top. A war of attrition. No momentum has been built by either, purely and simply because the players just aren't making balls from the break. Reyes, though, has a narrow advantage at 6 5. Two more racks needed, and he'll be the champion. control then and a success. I just wonder now Phil if Rodney Morris is beginning to think about the two breaks he had where he scratched twice and whether that could make a difference in this final. Six. Raised with a great chance to go just one away. I wonder Roxton whether he received any advice there from his cornerman, a gentleman by the name of Santos Sambajon, a Filipino who you can see in the picture there, now based in the United States and a very fine player in his own right. Yes, um, no doubt he would have done. Players are allowed to talk to their cornermen in between visits, in between racks. he would have said just make one off the break Efren but not the best positional shot three three in the side Let's play that nicely though just gone through Far enough to leave himself a shot on the two ball. So Efren Ray is looking like he's just starting to take control of this match now. Seven in the side. Uh, not as bad a shot as you might think because he's left himself a nice angle as long as he makes the five should be looking good for the rank just for four left afterwards <laughs> heart in mouth thought he'd missed it he did grossly overcut the ball but he just about found the pocket but yes and also Phil has he left himself all cuckooing on this four I believe he has. And that's going to make it a lot harder for him to get onto the eight because he can't just stun it in. He's got to bring the cue ball out. Four ball, corner. Not sure that the eight does go into the bottom right. If it does, he's okay. He should be able to just roll it in. And if you're bridging over an intervening ball and hitting down on the cue ball, the likelihood can be that you impart unwanted side spin. He <laughs> just made that again. Now, did he play for it in this pocket, Phil? I think he wanted to hit the ball into the opposite corner of the pocket and come out and leave himself the eight ball into the same bag. So, not a full pocket to go for then, but it does go.
Well, it did go, and really it was a good opportunity. The, the cue ball was cl very close to the eight, so really should have made that, but <laughs> just wasn't to be. The 11 undoing him. Far be it from me to second guess Efren Reyes, but why didn't he just quietly run the eight ball in, and therefore he would have had effectively a bigger pocket? because he could have played at a very slow pace towards the near jaw and taken any collision out of the equation. I think maybe he was just going for pure accuracy. He knows that had it hit the, the first angle, there was less chance of it going on, going in rather than hitting the far angle. So just a safety for Morris. I think he's just made the snooker. Has he though? Eight ball. Yeah. Well, he's called the eight ball to the right hand top pocket. The referee, Ken Schumann, saying, Are you sure you've got enough room? Well, he's going to have to take a close look at this, Phil. He's going to be standing right over it. This is going to be close. Wow. <laughs> Foul call. Reyes laughs. The referee deemed that he grazed the adjacent 15 ball before pocketing the 8 ball. And the referee proved correct. Spot on indeed, it was a foul. We see the slow motion again. That really was split second stuff. The referee stuck his neck out. He didn't have the benefit of the action replay. So good decision by him. And of course, foul on the eight ball means rack over. What a conclusion. Six racks each. They both require two more to be the champion. During this eight day tournament, this is their 29th match. And it's all coming down to just a handful of pots. And for the third time, Roxton, unbelievably, Morris scratches from the break. I just can't believe it. He wouldn't do that in a year's play. That's down this hall as well, practicing. Straight into the middle. I just can't see the ball square today, man. Wow. I can't see the ball square, man. This table, I've never seen it square yet. I don't know something about the lights. I'm <laughs> I've never. Yeah, Roddy Morris trying to blame, to blame us on the lights. <laughs> Not too sure that was the reason he scratched. <laughs> well, that certainly wasn't a highlight. Disgusting. <coughs> a solitary in off, forgivable. Two, well. A little galling. Three. Inexcusable. Yes, of course, and whoever wins this rack will have the break effectively to win the title. If they can get one off the break, that is, and run the rack. You never know, maybe an eight ball as well. It's always a possibility. Rodney Morris has, in fact, made an eight off the break during this tournament. So it is possible, highly unlikely, though, given the slow cloth. Players just happy to get one in. So, how will Reyes react to losing the previous rack in such bizarre circumstances? It isn't very often in this game that you actually pop the eight ball, don't scratch and still lose the rack in question. He certainly got the experience to cope with that adversity. Has he got the composure? 
12 in the corner. Well, he's got his last four stripes down this end of the table. Making positional play considerably easier and less pressurised for him. 10 ball, corner. Fifteen in the corner. It's a nice angle to come out into the table. Has he hit it enough? <laughs> he hasn't. Well, he wanted to be a good three or four inches higher up the table than that. He might, he might just be able to hold the cue ball with a soft screw. Certainly not as he would have wanted. Taking some time out, probably a good idea, given all that's gone on in this match so far. Eleven in the corner. If he can't hold it, he's got to go around the angles, and that certainly could go wrong. Well, a pretty good shot. He had the angle to hold into one of Morris's solids, and that's given them the chance to go just one away from the title, Phil. Not the most elegant of pots. He queued it rather twitchily. But for the fourth time in this match, Efren Reyes leads. This time, it's 7-6. He needs one more rack. Rodney Morris needs the remaining two. And you know, Roxton, when the report of this game is written, writ large will be the three in offs from the break from Morris which have proved so so expensive yes and was the, his last scratch maybe his last visit he's had a great tournament this week he was the first through to tonight's final so it'd be a disappointing way for him to go out still think there's a great chance it could go hill hill well at the North American aid ball open in Las Vegas the previous event or the most recent event on the IPT tour the title was decided by a run out from the break. Well, a slightly fortunate ball off the break for Reyes. Not the most well struck break offs. As you can see, he did well to control the cue ball. Not the most powerful, but he gets a lovely cannon there. And it even has pocket side on it to take it into the pocket. Back in Vegas in that North American aid ball open, the champion was Torsten Homan. He beat Mullen Manilow, a compatriot of Efren Reyes, 8-7. This time, will the Filipino be the beneficiary of good fortune? Well, you've got to say it's not a bad split. He wanted to break with a chance to clear up. He's having a good look. There's a stripe potentially po blocking this pocket. And he may well decide to play the six off it. Be a good shot if he could. He'll open up the pocket for the seven. But not a shot he wants to be playing at this stage. I mean, a good look at it. I think he is eyeing up the six off the stripe. This shot reasonably straightforward with the cue ball right behind the six but as he's got that angle to it makes it a lot harder for a player to see the angle and judge it just right especially playing it left-handed what a shot they call him the magician that was a rare old trick this was good to watch left-handed as well 
perfect contact. Six was always going to go in off it if he got the right contact on it. And he's getting scarily close to this title. Saying that, I think he's got the wrong angle on the five. Yes, over screwed. He can get through to the the two. Sitting over the top left pocket. So he's still got nice options to stay on the table. And really, even though he's taking a bit of time over this, Rodney Morris will be hoping for something similar to what happened in the last rack in order for Reyes to give him a chance to get back into this. Two ball, two ball, two ball. Using the angles as he does so well. One, one ball, side pocket. Getting ever closer. Yeah, and he, he needs to leave an angle on his last solid because the eight only goes into the bottom right. So he has to leave himself a nice angle. He's just having a look where he wants the cue ball. Three. Three ball, corner pocket. He's changed his mind, he's going to pop the three and leave the angle on the one to go down for the eight. Has to be careful because he has to get the right angle on this. Has he gone far enough? Not sure he has. <laughs> So near and yet so far. Sunny disposition, Efren Ray is always smiling. And even in this crucible of pressure, he sees the funny side. One ball, side. Yeah, I think he knows he was just gesturing that he maybe should have played to leave the three last. Had to play it with draw off two cushions, and that looks good. Is it going to stop? Well, it just did in time, and my goodness me. And that seemed to actually stop in an indentation in the table that was made by the balls being placed there. Yes, I mean... From the rack. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't have enough check side on it to hold the cue ball. It drifted on, and yes, it seemed to be pulled up by something. And it's left him a really good opportunity. Well, well. When he was a young lad in that pool hall in the Philippines, he could have never dreamed he would have an eight ball for $500,000. But that isn't a dream here in Reno, Nevada. It's a reality. Yeah! It's there, Efren Reyes, the world eight ball open champion. What a finish. He was the king of the hill in Orlando, Florida, back in December. Now he's the king of Reno. You know, Roxton, at the age of 52, the overwhelming majority of sportsmen either bask in the glory of past achievements or wonder what might have been. Reyes just keeps rolling along. And in three IPT tournaments, he has collected 765 thousand dollars a king's ransom in any country in the philippines nothing short of a fortune and this the decisive ball what a shot that was what excitement and finally he could capture the title unrestrained joy and relief Wonderful scenes. Ladies and gentlemen.
Gentlemen, the IPT 8 Ball Champion of the World, Efren Reyes. Half a million dollars and the trophy. Thank you, Efren. <laughs> That is Kevin Trudeau, the founder of the IPT Tour, handing over the Greenbacks. <laughs> Wonderful tournament, Roxton. And, as it turned out, a dramatic finish. Yes, wasn't it a fantastic final? Nearly went all the way. Efren just about hung on. Got the break at 7-6. Managed to clear and run from there. And the drama of the IPT, not over. Next up on the schedule, it's the IPT 8-Ball Masters in the Windy City from November the 26th to December the 3rd. Will Chicago be Efren's kind of town? Don't bet against it. Until then, though, from Reno, from Roxton Chapman, and from me, Phil Yates, it's goodbye. Oh, yes, and congratulations to the magician, Efren Reyes.